Talk about Mastery. Well, Mastery came out in, I think, 2013, 2012, something like that. I was basically writing it because, honestly, I was getting a lot of feedback from my first three books. A lot of my readers are young. I have a, 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 they, they skew a little bit male, 18 to 30, it tends to be. And I was getting emails about power and war and seduction that was beginning to trouble me. It was as if people had the idea that just kind of being a bullshit artist and playing the political game was enough to be successful in life. It reminds me of like uh, that movie uh, Wall Street with, uh, what was it, Gordon Gekko was his name, that character, it's just like, just snowplow everyone, right. you know, typical kind of 80s yeah. mentality. Right? Yeah, and I was feeling like a, young, a lot of young people were having that. And that's not, you know, that's important. I wrote the books. It's important to be able to understand the power game, how to deal with egos, et cetera. Yeah. But if your work isn't based on anything real, if you don't have real skills, if your work is shoddy, all the bullshit in the world won't be able to cover it up, right? It's going to show through. And I was really worried that people didn't understand how to make things, how to build things. I was having visions in my mind of 40 years from now, bridges would be collapsing because people don't know how to be engineers anymore. Right. They learn a sense of, of the process of mastering something, right? A lot of it comes from social media and the internet where people have this impression that you can have power in a, that there's shortcuts for anything, right? Well, yeah. And people have written books on it, right? I can think of Tim Ferriss, The 4-Hour Work Week, which is a, which is a yeah. life hack, and with all great intentions, by the way, right? All great intentions, but completely contrary to my belief. Yeah. My belief are there are no shortcuts in this life. You have to be able to put in the work. You have to be able to fail. You have to try again. You have to go through an apprenticeship phase. You have to try and get a mentor. You have to learn. Then maybe you can become creative, and here's how you become creative. And once you reach that point, where all of your knowledge and skill reaches that creativity mastery level, the game will flow and it'll be easy and you'll have a great life. Yeah. Okay, but get out. Of, so the reason I wrote mastery is we humans only do things that are pleasurable, right? We're attracted to the things that give us pleasure and we, we refrain from things that give us pain. Yeah. But we, how do we define pleasure? For most people, particularly young, it's instant. I want things that are quick. I want to get that, that jolt from a two-hour movie or from a video game or maybe from a week's worth of work. Well, yeah, the whole fast food movement was born on that. Yeah. yeah. But real pleasure, fulfillment, comes from something much longer. So when you reach a point where you're 30 years old, you've been serious, you've learned all these skills, you've gone to school, but you've tried different jobs, and now you're ready to start your own business and you have that level of wow, I've done all these great things, that is a much greater pleasure and thrill that you'll ever have in life than from something immediate. So think of your sense of pleasure, draw it out to five years, 10 years, 20 years, have a plan. So when you reach a point where you actually realize your dreams, that is the ultimate high you can ever have. So I wrote that book to make people aware that reaching a point of mastery and creativity is is the most ecstatic thing. It's a peak experience, to, to use Maslow's terms. It's worth going through all the pain. Yeah. It, it reminds me of the marshmallow test, too, this famous psychology study of the marshmallow test. You know this, where they put you know, a marshmallow in front of this, the, like a five-year-old, and they said, you know, if you'll just wait uh, 15 minutes, uh -huh. uh, we'll give you two marshmallows. Uh -huh. So don't eat it. And they would put the marshmallow in front of the kid, and they would leave the room. Of course, there was a two way window, yeah. window and they would watch and, and you know the, there was uh, kids who had just couldn't wait and they just devoured the marshmallow <laughs> and then of course there were a certain number that would you know just wait okay I'm going for two and I think they followed those kids for a couple of decades. Wow, wow, um, that's a great study. Well and, and definitely found as they extrapolated that that the kids who were able to wait and have patience were more successful at least on paper than the kids, you know, who did they do it. they do like three marshmallows and four, and then find out that the four marshmallow kids were like turned into like super. Right, I'm sure that there's a law of diminishing returns on that marshmallow Good study. Test. I never heard of it. Yeah, uh, but it's I think it was done in the '60s, pretty famous. Um, but but what you're saying in essence is, um, and I feel this too all the time, even now that I'm older than I used to be when I was coming out of school, and that is, patience. You know, and again, we've kind of come full circle back to nothing goes to waste, right? That the, 
the dues I paid washing the dishes, the pizza place, then was a springboard to, for me to, you know, do the other things in my life. I mean, we were just sitting back, you know, <laughs> chopping it up, reminiscing about the good old days and all that, <laughs> you know, tracking my roots, where I came from.